Hello everybody, how are you doing? You go ahead and turn that music down just a hair. Don't need it to be louder than I am. <clears throat> how is everybody doing this Tuesday afternoon? Hopefully y'all are ready for some South American flying. We are in Brazil today, flying from Rio to uh, Sao Paulo and back. Um, 
Beep, beep. I am a sheep. You are a sheep. <coughs> I'm a goat. A salty goat. And I go ba 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 and a ba ba ba. Okay, so I went ahead and I started going through my checklist, uh, mostly my preliminary checklist as we uh, got started here. Um, so now I'm halfway through the pre flight procedures checklist. Uh, actually, I'm almost all the way done with it. Engine pumps are all on. Uh, engine 1 and 2 fire test. Which those should be nice and loud for you. Then radios 3, 2, and 1 coming on. And it's time to set up our MCDU. Alright, so data looks good as it can be. Today we are going from... J to SBG. We are flight number Latin America 3633. Cost index this is the part where I lose chat just a little bit. I wonder if I can. Dear uh, developers of the Streamlabs OBS. Um, the Streamlabs OBS plugin for tablet and mobile. Uh, allow me to change the the um, the chat size. Right, I want to be able to see more of my chat. I, I don't care that I see a lot of lines at once. I care that I'm able to read it from across, you know, across my desk. Our cruise flight level today is gonna be upper climb two four zero. Grab our climb wind, and we're to our flight plan now. We did have to manipulate the flight plan a little bit, so we'll see how much this can pick up. Our departure from SBRJ from Rio de Janeiro is going to be uh, via runway 20 left. And we're going to be leaving via uh, India Hotel 1 Charlie. And do we take a transition? I don't think so. That should take us to... Ah, uh, you... In the ass. Okay. Have to address this a little bit. Perfect. All right. Now we're gonna go to Kevin. At which point we are jumping on an airway, Zulu 11. To Pago. Alright, and then we're going to be on arrival to Sao Paulo. Gonna be ILS 09 left whiskey via Utubu Utbu 1 Delta. Utbu 1 Delta. There we are. And we're gonna go from Marpu. Transition from Pagog. Perfect. I I did not, I honestly did not expect it to go so well. Uh, GR003, 004, 006, and Sug, Pagal, Kovla, Utber, Usag, Marpu, Delta 275, Quebec, Ilgo, and then straight in. All right. 
But we can actually remove this discount between Vusag and Marpu. And insert. And we're good. Okay. Legendary flight plan, we're just going to copy the active. And then we're going to go to init B. This is where we need our Tolis plugin again. We may have a little bit of a slow stream today. Um, I haven't been feeling good. I've been I've been not getting sleep. I'm exhausted. But we're gonna do this, right? All right. So zero fuel weight is gonna be five three point three tons. And our zero fuel weight center of gravity is going to be 26.8%. Block fuel is going to be 55 or 5.5 tons. Now we need to do our performance. I lost myself there for a minute. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take a flaps to departure. Ooh. Ooh, we have a little bit of a uh, short runway here for once. This is this is rare in this in this plane. Because it's such a small plane that it's very easy to get off the ground. Internet has made it to the party wifey Netscape Navigator. Heading to area 51. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's very rare that I'm going to enjoy something slower than Internet Explorer, but you got me. Uh, but yeah, this, this plane's usually a, a light, easy little thing to get off the ground, so our V1 and V rotate are usually the same uh, velocity. Not today. We got a 10 knot difference. We'll actually see a little bit of difference here. Uh, so that's going to be 112, 122, and 126 for V1, V rotate, V2. Flaps are going to be 2 slash up. No, not 23. 2 slash up, 0 points. And our flex temp is 57 degrees. Perfect. Yeah. All right, go back to our flight summary. Because I believe we are ready to fly. All right, folks, let's get this bitch going. Uh, pushback procedure. Sorry for the uh, puns, folks, but welcome to the stream. Please take your seats and ensure that your trays are in the full upright and locked position. Fasten your seatbelts and enjoy the flight. Uh, that was a fantastic um, flight attendant speech. Uh, so I'm going to try real, real hard and, and real badly to do a captain's PA. It's not going to go well because I'm not even planning this out. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard Latin America Flight 3633, service from uh, Santos Dumont to um, service from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil to Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, our expected travel time today is going to be about 40 minutes. Our maximum cruise altitude is going to be about 200 and, or 24,000 feet. Uh, hopefully you guys are going to enjoy a nice, easy flight. We do have a little bit of weather in the area, so please be prepared for slight turbulence during takeoff. Uh, please listen to your flight attendants and let them know if you need anything like a cold drink, peanuts, or a swift kick in the pants. Because here at Latin American Airlines, we are always happy to provide. Especially the latter. So... Uh, we're just going to get this thing rolling and hopefully we will be in the air within the next 10 to 15 minutes and we'll have you on the ground in, in, uh, Sao Paulo here in about 
probably 50 minutes, just past the hour. Thank you guys, and uh, have a nice flight. Alright, so, that's my, uh, my poor attempt at a captain's PA. So let's get this thing rolling. Uh, we need to set our altimeter, for which we need our radios. We're going to go to 122.2. This is Santos Dumont Information Whiskey. 2215 Zulu. Visibility greater than 10. Temperature 22. Dew point 21. Wind 180 at 9. Altimeter 1013. Advise you have information whiskey. End of information whiskey. This is Santos Dumont Information Whiskey. 2216 Zulu. You know, this is one of the rare cases in which the United States actually does something better than the rest of the world. This is one of the only cases in the world where where our way of measuring is actually statistically better, right? Because uh, QNH is measured in hectopascals, and one hectopascal is more than one uh, inch in mercury. Uh, the United States measures in inches of mercury. So as a result, our um, altimeter measurements are actually smaller and thus more accurate than uh, European and Latin American altimeters. One thing that we have over them, it's the only thing, and yes, I'm going to lord it because I know we suck at everything else. Okay, so flight director is both on. That is checked. FCU speed should be in managed dash mode, heading as well. We're going to set our um, cleared altitude. Now, here's the thing. I was unable to find departure procedures or arrival procedures for either one of these. So we're going to fly this old school style where we don't really know or care about the ATC rules in the area. So we're just going to go ahead and set ourselves up to the 24,000 we have cleared. Or that, that w is our cruise altitude. Because I have no idea what our actual flight would be like for this. Uh, this is all just done from the seat of my plant, plant, my pants. Wait, Sao Paulo, Netscape Navigator is on the wrong flight. You are absolutely correct. Netscape Navigator is on the wrong flight. Just like every time that Netscape Navigator tries to go anywhere, it winds up in the wrong place. Usually at a porn site. Uh, I learned that in elementary school, or not elementary school, middle school. Where Netscape Navigator always seemed to manage to find a porn site, no matter what I looked for. Even if I had the correct uh, site. So, um, anti-skid and nose wheel steering is on. Switching panel should be all normal. And transponder, we should set our squawk. We really should. We're not going to because uh, we're offline. So I'm not going to worry about it. Beacon on. And then we should be ready for engine start and pushback. So let's go ahead and better pushback. Pre-plan pushback. There you go. Yes, Bard. How are you doing today? What can I do for you? I'm going to go ahead and tail left lined up here sitting down i am sitting down i am braced i'm glad i was braced because that is loud okay so i'm sitting down i am braced everybody brace 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 what are we bracing for other than that, racing for that is also very useful. Look around. We got a beautiful jetway here at at uh, Rio. Take a look at this. Look at that jetway. Holy crap! Button, 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 button. Thank you so much for that ride pause. Button, 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 button. I love how she. I love how she trolls me, and how she changes her cadence in the middle of it. 
But thank you so much for okay. the host. All doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect. Thank you so much for the host. Thank you so much for the button, the uh, the subscription. It is so appreciated. You have no idea. Um, I think we're getting very close to actually getting another payout from Twitch, which will mean a uh, set of rudder pedals, hopefully. Um, something to help the the stream get a little better. Did he say to? Nope, he's just lifting me. And another button. You got another button. Oh, you got a gift sub. Thank you so much for that gift sub. And it looks like we got yet another set of pride wheels. Well connected and bypass B is secured. Please release parking brake. All right, you got that. Parking brake has been removed. Starting pushback now, and you may start your engine. Starting engines. Engine start. Engine number two. Master on. I'm going to look for this to hit about 25% into rotation. Thank you so much for those buttons there, Bart. That that helps the stream so so much, and everything that goes into the stream comes back, or everything that comes out of the stream goes back into the stream. I was about to say that definitely the wrong way. Uh, all right, so that's engine two, positive start. Let's start engine one. You hear that PTU bark in the background? It's a little soft, but you can hear the squeakies. Um, Everything that you guys send to me because of the stream, I do my absolute best to put it back into the stream. I can't, I may not always be able to do that depending on whether or not I get to a point where I have to use some of this money to live. But so far, I've never had to do it and I don't want to ever have to. So, um, that's, that's the goal. We want to always, always, always have that. All right, engine mode to normal. As soon as we we have positive start engine one. Engine mode normal. APU bleed off. Uh, ground spoilers armed. Flaps set for takeoff. Pitch trim set for takeoff. That's going to be up 0 0.6. APU master off. Operation complete. Please set parking brake. Set parking brake. You got it, sir. Connecting to. Please stand by. All right. Engine start checklist has been completed. Let's wait for this guy to disconnect, and then we can start our um, after uh, our taxi procedures. I'm so glad that uh, Twitch decided to do these these pride emotes. Um, it gives people a reason to sub, and it goes to a good cause, right? Like, I hate the fact that we have to call it, you know, gay rights, trans rights. I hate that. No. It's just human rights. They're all humans. And if we have, if there's any group of humans that doesn't have full human rights, then we have a problem with our human rights, and we need to make sure that they are all uh, being represented. See you next time and have a safe flight. And signal on my left. Thank you very much, sir. You can go ahead and disconnect anytime you are ready. We need to wait until they are fully clear and show us the pin that they removed from our uh, nose wheel. All right, we are good to go. So let's go ahead and turn our nose wheel light to taxi. Parking brake off. Elapsed time run. Go ahead and check our flight controls. Full left, full right, full up, full down. All right, that is checked and good. Brakes all look good. Flight controls have been checked. FMA should say nav and climb. Auto brake set max. Terrain on ND as required. It shouldn't really be required because we are going to be exiting uh, to the water today.
you little shit. Real water landings. We are not gonna do water landings. I hope. What in the hell is this? Who made this? This? Oh, come on. Who the hell made this and put traffic on the taxiways? Guys, come on. We're just going to plow right through it. Don't worry, we'll be fine. Um, but to whoever made this Sao Paulo... Uh, the Sao Paulo airport here. Guys, what are you doing with your lives? This is not okay. This is not okay, guys. I'm... I. This isn't even following the taxiways real world. Guys. This this is a problem. Okay, so we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to back taxi cuz none of this is real world. This doesn't even look real world. Um So we're going to back taxi. And then we're gonna execute a three point. Uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna execute a turnaround. Uh, Cause that is th this is a complete mess. Okay, so we're gonna come almost all the way to the end. We're going to slow down to about three knots. We're going to turn till we're about 45 degrees. I know it looks like we're going way over the threshold, but we're not, I promise. Would you look at that like a professional? All right, TCAS. No blue. Four takeoff checklist. Transponder to TARA. Brake temperature is good. Engine mode as required. Runway turn off lights on. Landing lights on. Nose lights to take off. Take off and climb. I'm going to do chrono start. Engines to 50%. Stabilized. Release parking brakes. Flex set. Airspeed is alive. We are absolutely at the wrong end of the airport. It's all right. B1. We rotate. Positive rate. Gear up. Flaps one.
lever to climb. Lower the nose. Pick up some speed. Turn on autopilot as we're about to go into the clouds. All right. Brakes released. Flex toga. 80 knots. Uh, landing gear up. Ground spoilers disarmed. One of these days, I'm going to start remembering that. Uh, nose wheel lights off. Runway turn off lights off. Uh, autopilot is on. Thrust is to the climb detent. Flaps are being retracted per procedures. Engine mode is at normal. Engine anti-ice is not necessary. Landing lights will be retracted at 10,000 feet. Altimeter will be set standard when we cross our transition altitude. Go ahead and look here. Our trans altitude is 7,000 feet today. Go ahead and set flaps zero. All right, so we took off the wrong end of the airport because, again, I was not able to find any departure charts. That includes the uh, aerodrome map. But somehow we've still managed to be fine. We are on course and we are headed towards Sao Paulo. Once we get to Sao Paulo, because it's only going to be about a 40 minute flight, we're going to turn around and we're going to come right, right back. Uh, we are running just a little late today. Uh, looks like we're about five, ten minutes later than I expected. So, um, sorry about that, but we'll be fine. All right, we're crossing 7,000 feet. We're going to set standard barrel. Little shit. Looks like we have some constraints on the way out. We need to hold at flight level 80 until we cross that. <clears throat> Which means we're doing fine. And we are on open climb now, I believe. Now, I tell you, we barely took off before the end of that runway. Uh, that was rough. Yeah, it looks like what we should have done is come this way. If I'd have looked at the map, I would, but the uh, the actual maps on like Google and stuff did not show any of that restriction. Yes, did you know if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can link it to your Twitch account and you get a free monthly sub that you can give to anyone. It, it's not specific. Um, it's not that you can only give it to me, although I wouldn't mind that. Uh, but you can give it to anyone. You do have to do it manually every month. You can't uh, just set it and forget it. <clears throat> every month it just gives you a free token. You can spend that token as you want, when you want, where you want. Alright, so it looks like we are above 10,000 feet. I'm going to go ahead and release the passengers and I'm going to turn off our wing or our uh, landing lights. So you guys are free to move around the cabin and to enjoy the flight as you see fit. The waitress staff, pardon me, the uh, flight attendants will be coming around with your water, with your liquor, with your, um, with your peanuts and your pretzels. And everything that you could possibly uh, imagine, plus the kick in the pants that we promised you at the beginning of this flight. Uh, they'll be coming around there any minute now, so watch out for that. Please make sure that you keep your legs and your arms tucked in and out of the aisle so they don't hit you with the cart. Uh, the only damage that you should receive on a Latin American flight is um, the kick in the pants. That's what we're hoping for here, and we hope that you guys are all having a fantastic flight. So far, we haven't seen any of that turbulence that we told you to worry about, but uh, 
better to be braced and make sure that you're ready then to have it happen and you're not. Thank you guys for flying Latin American Airlines and have a fantastic trip. We should be there in about 30 minutes or so. So just uh, keep an eye out for that, watch the time, and enjoy your flight. Be sure to kick up your feet onto your neighbor's back, because uh, they all appreciate that. Netscape calls from the back of the plane. And we're going to stop in Area 51 and go into the rain. <laughs> Listen, Netscape hasn't figured out how to use the call button yet. So, um... We're just going to squawk 7500 because we've got Netscape on board, and I'm pretty sure they mean bad business. <laughs> so, you know, that's actually a real thing. Um, there there are transponder codes that you can, you can squawk different transponder numbers, and they will mean something. I believe 7500 is hijacker on board. 7600 is, I think, there's a communications problem. I think there's there's three that you need to remember, and I can't remember what the third one is. There's there's a uh, hijacker on board, a communications problem, uh, and I forget the third. I'll I'll figure it out sometime and let you guys know. But uh, but yeah, that whole squawk seventy five hundred that's real. So if you wind up flying on any open networks like. Um, VATSIM, IVAO, uh, POSCON, uh, Pilot Edge. Do not put in 7500 for your squawk code. You On POSCON, you will get straight up banned from the server for that. Um, POSCON is really cool. I like those guys. Um, I've, been, I've talked a little bit with Andrew Heath, who is the owner of POSCON. And he seems like a real cool dude. Um, what they're trying to do is fantastic. They're tr they're also trying to put together. I don't I don't think that I'm in any way restricted from saying this. Uh, I hope that I'm not. I hope that I'm not outing possible plans that they may have. But it seems to me like they are trying to plan having a uh, training section. Uh, well, they where they will kind of acclimate you to communicating on a network and uh, correct ATC protocols which seems really cool to me I, I, I like that idea a lot um, especially since 90% of what keeps me off networks is I don't know how to communicate on, on radio and that's something that can definitely help with in the real world as well and in, in reality, that's half what it's all about. That's, like, POSCON is about two things. All flight networks is about two things. One, flying with your friends, right? Being able to exist in the same world and to see other traffic and interact with them, right? The other thing that these networks are for is interacting with ATC. If you're not interacting with T ATC, the only thing you're doing is seeing other traffic and, frankly... If you don't have a lot of friends that are into this lifestyle, that are into this hobby, it doesn't mean anything. You, you won't see anything. There's nobody here, right? Like, just seeing another random person isn't really all that cool. Seeing your friends is. So, um, half of it is, is about learning and communicating with ATC. And I think that that's, that's kind of the coolest part, is having realistic communication and not having to listen to X-Plane's absolutely atrocious ATC. X-Plane, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell it to you real. Um, and don't, get it, don't, don't misunderstand me, I love X-Plane. X-Plane is right now my favorite simulator, bar none. Um, MFS might change that in the future, but right now, X-Plane is the best simulator, period. Okay? Yes, I include, uh, P3D there, uh, mostly because it's built on the X, on the, uh, FSX engine, right? Here's the thing. 
And and Laminar, I really want you to hear me on this. I'm taking I'm taking the pilot's cap off. Because I need you to know how serious this is. Flight Simulator X, which was released, what, almost 20 years ago? More than 20 years ago? I'm not sure. I don't know how many years ago. It was forever ago. Okay, Microsoft has been out of the flight sim community for ages. And hands down, their ATC is better than anything in X-Plane. Period. Bar none. It's still bad. But it is leaps and bounds beyond X-Plane. Listen. If I turned on ATC right now, what you would hear is a whole bunch of... ATC calls to the same two or three um, airplanes in the air all the time. 1982. That's Flight Sim 1.0, though. We're talking about Flight Sim X. Microsoft Flight Sim X. So it wasn't. It's not that old. Uh, I don't. I don't think that uh, Flight Sim 1.0. Okay, 2014. No. That's got to be Steam Edition. No, Flight Sim X has been out longer than that. Let me check. I'm going to look this up. Two thousand six, October thirteen, two thousand six. It has been uh, thirteen and a half years. Thirteen and a half years old, and it still blows X Plane out of the water. It actually tracks you. Um, X Plane just tries to micromanage you onto paths that don't exist. Um, it it constantly calls uh, for for other planes to make adjustments up, down, turning left, turning right. Just micromanaging every inch that they fly. And you will hear constant radio chatter for only two to three... Uh, for only two to three planes. Um, and then it will also constantly call you and tell you to adjust. Just because you're a little... You know, a, a, couple, of, uh, a couple of degrees off course. Right? Right? And even that, only because of crosswinds, or rather, it doesn't account for crosswinds, I should say. Um, so, like, I have flown hundreds of flights now, and they are all managed by my flight management computer, right? My FMC. I'm following real-world flights. I'm filing real-world flights with the... Uh, with the... Um, games in-game communications here with the file flight plan I'm following procedures I'm following the correct flight plan and then it still tries to direct me weirdly and it doesn't do like real world in a real world ATC situation you wouldn't tell an airliner to turn right heading 030 unless there's no waypoint if you're just vectoring them, then yes but if you're sending them to another waypoint which is what it's frequently doing um, it'll, it'll, so like if it wants me to skip a waypoint, it will tell me to turn right heading 030. I turn right heading 030. It gets me onto course for the next waypoint that it wants me to go on. Then it says resume on navigation. So I turn the autopilot back on and it just turns me back onto where the autopilot thinks I'm supposed to be. Then X planes ATC calls me again, tells me to move again. This doesn't make any sense. What they would do in the real world is say, come right, heading 030. Once you're on point for where they want you to head, then they're going to tell you, direct, you know, uh, direct Kevin. And then resume on navigation, right? But if they don't tell you to direct to a new waypoint, then you're just going to wind up turning back off of the course they want you on. 
But X-Plane just, they, they don't give you waypoints, they just tell you, come right, heading 030, then turn left, heading, you know, 0, uh, 020, re resume on navigation. Doesn't make any sense. Um, so I wind up having to spend the entire flight flying by ATC's instructions, or the entire flight listening to ATC yell at me. Uh, and then landing and it screaming at me that I violated ATC too many times and my flight's been cancelled. So, 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 Laminar, your ATC is garbage, throw it out. It's, it's better than... I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the same thing I have told so many people, okay? If you can't do it well, don't do it badly, right? If you can't do it, it's better to not include it than to have it done badly. Okay, so our um, runway elevation in Sao Paulo is going to be 2445. Probably on an upward slope. Because the airport elevation is 4559. So our decision height is going to be 2545, which is 100 feet radio. And it's already screaming at me for destination data. Okay. This IS Gorol Hoska Andre Franco Mon Information Whiskey. 2247 Zulu. Visibility greater than 10. Temperature 19. 2.13. Wind 90 at 2. Altimeter 1016. Advise you have information whiskey. End of information whiskey. This is Gorol Hoska Andre Franco Mon information with. Alright, that's that. Let's look at. Wind. We get descent wind? We can. Alright. Something went correctly. Perfect, perfect, perfect. It looks like my tablet disconnected there for a minute. Thankfully, I didn't miss anything. Cool. Perfect. All right, so technically, I believe Rex actually on a pro. Heading to Kevin. No, we are on Zulu 11. All the way to Pegog is Zulu 11, and then we'll be on approach. Where's Pegog? There's Pegog. So until there, we're on Airway Zulu 11, and this is our approach. Which that looks that looks fun. <laughs> So, I do know from our approach plate, I wasn't able to find any procedures, but I did find the approach plate. But Marpu, we need to be down to 7,000 feet. I'm going to set that. For when we hit descent. Looks like we hit Gilgo at 5,700 feet. And then at DME 11 to BCO, we're limited to 4,230 feet. That's going to be interesting. Um, that looks like our absolute bottom limit there is going to be 4,200.
And then we have to have a sharper descent from B from DME 11 down to the runway. But let's take a look outside the airplane. Ooh, spicy. Oh, we got a military cruiser down there? Oh, that's an aircraft carrier. Look at this gorgeous, gorgeous area. I love this, this flight flies on the coastline. Absolutely beautiful. And all these mountains here, it is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I'll tell you what though, I'm gonna have to step away for just two seconds here because it is getting quite toasty in this room. And I need to adjust my fan, so I will be back in just two seconds. See you then. Alright, and I'm back. I've had to turn my fan up and adjust the uh, aim of it. So I apologize if you guys get a little extra wind sound from me. Just consider that realism. Uh, it is getting heckin' toasty in this room, so uh, I apologize. But that is just the best I can do. Alright, so... <laughs> You're almost to Lodog. You're still quite a ways away from our top of ascent. Look at this, where does it say our top of ascent is? It's showing our top of descent just before GR006. So it's between GR004 and 06. Where are we showing it here? We're showing it just before 003. But I trust the Airbus more than I trust Simbrief. So we're going to fly as the Airbus tells us. Alright, looks like our lower ECAM all looks good so far. Uh, our FMA shows us still at cruise, navigation mode, speed hold. But the important part here is that when we get to uh, When we get to Gilgo, or not Gilgo, Marpu. Marpu, we need to not only be at 7,000 feet, but we need to be at or below 190 indicated airspeed. Beyond that, I don't think we have any lower speed restrictions. 
Although we will uh, obviously drop down, you know, 170. We'll probably touch down at about 140, 130. Maybe less. It looks like we're about, what is that, 30 miles away from top of drop? Let's take a look here. Runway elevation, this says... Maybe 2461. That's a little different than what the Jepson says. So I'm going to trust Jepson. Let's go ahead and do a flyby while we're still able. Uh, still spot. Listen to those Airbus engines scream. This area is absolutely beautiful. To, uh, I think it was Angelbird or Angel, Angel. I'm sorry, what was your name? Let me make sure I get it right. Yeah, Angelbird. Okay, right. Angelic Bird. Thank you guys so much for uh, suggesting this flight. This flight is gorgeous. I love it so much. Uh, I appreciate the suggestion. And I hope that you are able to see this. If you can't, then uh, this will always be available on uh, VOD. So if you check out the VOD after the stream, you'll be able to watch the entire stream. You can always do that with any of my videos. You'll see probably about two to three months worth of my streams available for viewing. After the fact, all you got to do is just click on my channel and then click on videos. Then you should be able to see past broadcasts will be what you're looking for. Um... There's probably also going to be some other stuff there, like um, clips and things like that. That's going to be stuff that people saw me do that was funny or amazing. And um, that's probably going to be something that we're going to do today. We're probably going to get at least a clip somewhere. Because I am going to absolutely smash this runway. Um, we're probably going to crash. Because this is a short, short, short runway. No, I was I was surprised that I was able to get off the ground at South, at uh, Rio because I don't think that's the actual re the the uh, water landing. Don't forget, in the United States, you can get bits for free by viewing ads. Just click on the little diamond bits icon down in the bottom in chat. It's actually in the chat bar, and then click on Get Bits and uh, click Watch Ads for Bits. You won't get a lot. You'll probably get between like five and fifty, depending on the ad. Uh, sometimes I've seen a whole lot. Like I think once I got three hundred from watching some kind of a car ad. I think. Um, but you can set that into another tab and just watch the videos that way. Also, interestingly, if you do not live in the United States but you have a VPN, you can set your VPN location to the United States. And then you absolutely can uh, hit that button to descend. Then you absolutely can um, then then you absolutely can watch ads for bits, even though you are not in the United States. Uh, fun fact that also works for things like Bra uh, Brave 
browser uh, downloads. It works for Netflix. It works for Hulu. It works for Pandora and Spotify. It works for absolutely everything. So uh, don't be afraid to grab yourself a VPN if that sort of um, content is worth your money. That is a little creepy, by the way. The reflection of the eyes. A little weird. Okay, so we are on descent. We are currently below our descent path, which is fine. I'd rather be below it than above it. Because we can always descend slower, but we can only descend so fast. Otherwise, we overspeed the aircraft and we rip the wings off. And I don't know if you've ever tried to fly in an aircraft that's had its wings ripped off, but unless you're in an F-15, you're kind of shit out of luck. By the way, that's a true story. It was an F-15 that was in a training uh, operation, and he clipped another aircraft, lost his wing. His left wing was torn completely off the plane. And because the F-15 has such a large... Uh, belly that is flat it was able to fly off of the body lift and the one wing but only if he kept his speed up so he couldn't slow down for landing he basically had to come in screaming like a bat out of hell and then land and 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 just took an entire runway to land i think he wound up overrunning the one runway as well but the thing is, he wasn't able to tell until after he'd landed what the problem was because the 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 damage to the plane had was causing like a, a fuel vapor to just vent out the side of the, the aircraft and basically hid where the wing would have been. So he couldn't see that the wing was gone. And he just flew with one wing completely missing for about, I think it was like 12 to 15 minutes until he could get down on the ground. Um, and just at any time he tried to bring that speed back, the, he started to lose control of the aircraft. All right, here we go. We are on approach. Hopefully we are going to be speeding down. Let's see, where is... We've got all the way till here before we have to be down to... What was it? 170? 190? 190 or 170? 190. But once we get up here to... Marpu? Marpu. Yeah, Marpu. At Marpu, we have to be at 190 for our indicated airspeed and 7,000 feet AGL. Or MSL. I'm sorry, real life air uh, pilots, please do not crucify me. I am doing my best here. This is one of those landings where you're turning, taking a left at Albuquerque. No, uh, this is not a circle to land, um, which is ironic because the Albuquerque airport actually does have a circle to land, and this airport does have a circle to land. This is not it. This is a straight in. Uh, I specifically looked for a straight in because of the fact that I didn't have approach plates, or I didn't have the, the approach procedures. So since I didn't have the approach procedures, I wanted to make sure that I was not um, set up poorly for the circle to land. It probably would have been fine, but I wanted to make sure that especially since I had no prior experience flying this particular approach that I had my greatest chance at success which means a nice long uh, straight in approach and then you get to see me flip it around do it the other direction and be completely blind I will have absolutely no way of knowing um, whether or not what I'm doing is correct Okay, so we're under 7,000 feet. I don't know. We're, we're going to switch over. 
I think it was 1016. Uh, performance approach. Yeah, 1016. We're actually a lot lower than we looked. This is about 4,200 feet on the ground. I would know more specifically what the ground elevation is here, except for I don't actually have my uh, approach procedures, which is what would have my charts there would have the uh, ground level here for this sector. Okay, so we're intersecting Gilgo at 5,700 feet. Then we'll go down to 4,230, which I'll have to go down to 43. And intercept at... 11 DME. Okay. Seven thousand feet at Marpu should probably be something like um, four thousand AGL. This is a perfect time for me to illustrate the difference between AGL and MSL. Uh, MSL means mean sea level. It's the average sea level of water on planet Earth. Uh, so that's what you'll get from an altimeter because that w measures not the amount of ground that's below you but the amount of air that's above you, right? So measuring the amount of air that's above you is more accurate in terms of uh, not being dependent on the, on the shape of the earth. The problem is, is that altimeters are based on air pressure, which air pressure can change to gas, right? So, um, while it's not dependent on the curvature of the Earth, it is dependent on um, air density. And that's why we have to adjust our settings. So basically, they take a setting, they take a, a fixed place on the ground that they know what its elevation is from mean sea level. Because you're able to measure it directly, right? Um... And then they measure how much air is above it. Then they send the aircraft a that measurement. And as long as everybody in the air is using the same measurement, then regardless of whether it's specifically down to the foot correct, there'll still be they'll still all be spaced properly. So, although I might not be down to the foot at 7,000 feet, um, what I definitely am is. Uh, while I may not be down to the foot 7,000 feet, somebody who is at 6,000 feet will definitely be 1,000 feet below me. Okay. This is going to start getting interesting. Let's look at our descent procedures. Landing elevation set to auto. Mikdu arrivals is complete. Performance approach is complete. Big dude, top of descent winds is complete. FCU altitude set and push. We have done uh, speed break half as required. Not required at this time. Altimeter set to Q&H, which we have. Uh, landing light should be on at 10,000 feet. Let's go ahead and turn those on. And we're going to seat the passengers. ND data should have constraints on. I'm going to go ahead and turn on extra airports on the uh, first officer's side. FCU LS as required, which when we turn around, I will get that on. McDo Radnav check and set. All right, we are on approach. FCU speed, manage dash mode. Speed brake as required. Let's make sure that this has... Flight plan at Marpu. Okay, cool. 
That is correct. All right, so we're on descent again. We need to be at or above 10,000 feet at Kovla, which we will be doing just fine. I'm going to cross at any second, and we will still be descending, so that's good. Now we're going to start slowing down right about now. So you're going to see our engines will probably drop down to maybe to idle, I'm not sure. And we're going to decelerate again here at this waypoint, probably to 210. Right now we're sitting at 230 or 250. Fifty-five. That's where it's wanting to stay, roughly. But it's about to decelerate to two thirty, two ten. We're gonna two ten and then two ninety. Not sure why it's quite doing this turn here, but I'm good with it. It gets me a better angle to come in on. Okay, so our next elevation after Marpu at 7,000 is going to be Gilgo at 4230. Go to 43 for now. And now we're dropping speed, hopefully quickly, so we don't get a deviation. And we're deviating. Okay, we can go ahead and put in our first notch of flaps. Go ahead and turn on our LS. Under 200 feet, speed checked, flaps two. All right, flaps three is at 185, speed checked, flaps three. And final is at full is at 177. We are well below. Should be checked. Flaps full. Once we cross, 
All right, we're going to turn on autopilot. We're going to turn on approach mode. Turn on autopilot 2. And it's going to put us on approach. Okay, localizer and glide slope. We are on our way to... Flaps to landing gear down when ready. Ground spoilers armed. Glide slope captured. We're still dialing in the localizer. All right, we are landing on zero nine left, so this is us. Ground spoilers auto brake as required. I'm going to go ahead and set it up for medium. Uh, flaps three, e cam all green. Flaps full. Auto throttle check on. Nose wheel light set to taxi. Runway turn off lights. I'm going to drop our gear. We're lit up like a Christmas tree. Alright, we need to call the cabin. Make sure everything is copacetic and we are on course. All right, we are clear to land. Ecam no blue. We are on final. About a seven and a half mile final. Go ahead and check. Everything. Spoilers are armed. Flaps are full. Lights are on. Make sure those passengers are seated. All right. Landing gear down. Signs on. Cabin ready. Spoilers armed. Flaps full. We are fully configured. Three green. There should be another setup here, I think, somewhere but I don't know where they are. So, three green, three here. We're all good. All right, we are on final approach. That's the outer marker. All right, looks like we have a straight headwind at four knots. All right, I've taken manual control of the aircraft. Looks like our winds changed a bit. Got a little bit of a quartering headwind now. Here we go. Two. 
Clear to land. Reversers. Manual braking. All right. Well, that was not as soft as a landing of as I would have liked. Let's go ahead and retract our flaps, disarm our Spoilers. Turn off our landing lights. APU master on. Go ahead and vacate the runway. Right, I have no idea what this place looks like, so I'm just gonna head over here towards the tower and assume that that is correct, generally speaking. All right, brakes are hot. We're gonna turn on those fans. They're not terribly hot. We're okay. All right, let's look at our rollout procedures. Landing lights retracted, ground spoilers disarmed, engine mode is normal, flaps are retracted, APU master is on, APU start can turn on once it's available, terrain on ND off, brake fans on if over 300 degrees, which we are. And that's us. All right, so let's... Go ahead and turn off our runway turn-off lights because we're off the runway. Knock that off. Okay, we're gonna go in one more before we cut across. And that was definitely a very firm landing. That was not a good landing, not by a long shot. But it was a passable landing. Uh, I would have definitely gotten a call from my carrier, but uh, I'm an amateur, and I'm just doing the best I can here, so I'm not too worried about it, uh, plus I'm trying to stream, and that, that does take away some of my... Um, some of my ability to focus on the flight itself. Right, let's go ahead and pull into this first terminal here. Alright, we're pretty low on speed. We're doing alright. Go ahead and let it inch just a little further forward. All right, let's see how we did here. 
external circle. We can go a little bit further because we are a much smaller aircraft. So we need to be up to this line here. Perfect. All right, so let's go through our parking procedure. Parking brake pressure check green, all looks good. Anti-ice off, we don't have any APU bleed set on. It never did start my APU, fantastic. We're gonna have to wait a minute while that starts up. And then I'll be able to quickly as I can set up a turnaround flight. All right, and it looks like our APU is probably available now. There we go. APU bleed set on. Uh, engine one and two master off. Runway turn off lights off, wing lights off. Nav and logo off. Nose wheel lights off, because we don't want to blind anybody. Too late. Beacon off. Seat belts off. Uh, elapsed time stop. Fuel pumps off. Transponder to standby. McDo's dim. Which we're not going to really worry about much. Brake fans will come off when they are good and ready. Alright, so that is us into Sao Paulo. Now give me just a minute here. I'm going to switch us to a Be Right Back screen while I set up the second leg of the flight. During this time, my mic will be muted. And then we'll take off. I should be maybe five minute stops. Thank you so much for watching and I will be right back.
Alright, I'm back. I think this is what we're gonna do. Um, we'll see what the plane wants to do. So, our chances of crashing probably just switched to right about, um, 60%. We're gonna do our best to not do that, but it's probably gonna happen. So, go ahead and get this thing, uh, into turnaround state. This thing is already in a turnaround state. Let's get it into a uh, flying state. Let's go back, look at preliminary pre-flight. This is probably all going to be done already. We do need to look at our fuel. We need to make sure our fuel pumps are all off. They are. All right, so let's load our fuel. Um, look at my flight plan here. It's like 55, 53. Plugins, total list, open ISCS, and we need to be at 55, 53. So I'm going to go to 56. And it looks like today our passengers are 118 going back to Rio. And we have two tons of cargo. This looks like a much more manageable flight. Looking like a more real world flight. All right. That should be good. Apply these load settings. Thank you. All right. So now that fuel is loaded, APU fire test. Uh, that's not going to be necessary because we're already on. Uh, APU master, APU start, cockpit lights, and mic dues as required. They all look good. Uh, flaps lever should match ecam all the way retracted um, speed brake should be retracted probe and window heat auto APU bleed on when available which it should still be on it is check uh, generator uh, pardon me air conditioning panel no white uh, cross bleed set to auto Air conditioner temp as required. Generator one and two check on. All other lights off. Uh, ventilation panel, all lights off. Preliminary pre-flight procedures complete. Pre-flight procedures, adheres should all still be aligned because we never turn them off. Strobe should set to auto. It still is on auto. Uh, let's go ahead and turn our wing lights on. Our nav and logo lights to system one. Uh, seat belts to on. We're going to assume that people have reboarded the aircraft. Uh, the others are still on on and auto. Or auto and armed. Landing elevation set to auto, which it still is. Pack flow, we should still be in normal because we are three passengers higher than low is required. Fuel pumps all on. Engine one and two fire tests. Perfect. Our radios are still on. Now we need to configure our MCDU. All right. Initialization. We are flying from SBGR to SBRJ. Nope. 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 No. Return. RS is still aligned. Okay. Today we are going to be uh, Latin American Airlines. Uh, let's see, what is it? 32, 30, 32, 36. This is a real life flight, folks. Unload it. 10, 32, 36. There you go. Cost index. Today's going to be five again. Cruise flight level is going to be. 270 winds climb wind quest it thank you all right let's go to our flight plan we're gonna be departing go ahead and look at my flight planning page we're gonna be departing via Doral to Bravo on runway zero nine left We're gonna go Doral 1 Bravo, same difference. Uh, 
And it looks like this is gonna take us straight to Borlu. Yep, we're good. Okay, so that'll take us to Dorlu. Then en route, we're going to go... Imdab. And we're going to go via Airway. Uniform Zulu 3-7. Do you grad? Insert. And now we need to do our arrival. We're gonna come in to runway zero two left with or two zero left whiskey. Two zero left whiskey. Is star? I think we have no star. The Gelut uh, with the Gelut via and no transition, no transition. Very flight plan insert. So if we take out this insert, should get Gelut RJ 931 RJ 031. 072073904906 left. All right, perfect. Okay, that's Mikdu configuration completed. Push back and start. Let's see, we're taking off via runway 09 left yes yes zero nine left okay wait where are we there we are so zero nine left we're gonna be right here we are basically facing the correct direction we just need to tail right to go back out. Perfect. All right, so plugins, better push back. Replan. Push back this way. Lots of love. I hope you come back. Good luck on landing. Yeah, thanks. That that sounds about right. Sadly. All right. Grounded to cockpit, plan acknowledged. Please call me through the menu when you're ready. All right, I am indeed ready. All right. Go ahead and start push Ground back. To All right. Altimeter s or altitude set to ATC clear. Altimeter set, which should still be good. Uh, flight directors both on. Turn off our LS. Flight directors are both on. Uh, speed and heading should be dashed. Altitude should be set to ATC cleared, which we are weird about because I don't have actual departure plates. So we're going to go 2700. Or two, flight level 270. Uh, anti skid, nose wheeled steering on. Switching panel all normal. Transponder set squawk and beacon on. Now, as soon as they get me hooked up and ready to go. So, are you going to be here for the second flight? For okay. the second half of the flight? All doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect. Are you going to be here for the second half of the flight, wifey? We are going a little bit longer than usual. I mean, I'm about to take off and we have 13 minutes left in the usual stream. But it's only like a 40, 50 minutes flight, so... Speaking of which, welcome to Latin American Airlines. This is Latin American Airlines Flight 3236 with service to Rio de Janeiro. Thank you so much for flying with us today. We are going to be flying at cruise altitude of 27,000 feet. Uh, we're going to be having you there in about 31, 32 minutes. I, I, I would probably plan for about 45. So uh, we're going to try and get you there very quickly. Uh, 
We're going to try and get you there very quickly. Starting pushback now, and you may start your engine. We may start our engines. Perfect. We're going to try and get you there as quickly as possible. Thank you guys very much for flying Latin American Airlines. And make sure that your seat backs and tray tables are buckled and in their fully upright and locked positions. Keep your seat belts uh, fastened. Listen to the flight crew at all times. And as always, thank you so much for flying Latin American Airlines. We'll see you in Rio. We're not expecting any weather on the way, so uh, we'll release you at 10,000 feet and let you move around the cabin. Thank you so much. Have a good day. I have no idea if that's anything close to what Latin American Airlines actually plays. Uh, I only, f I, I've only flown maybe five times in my life, six times. So, um, eh, I don't know what people say. All right, engine two is started, engine one coming on. Oh dear, oh dear, I did not do this. Plugins, Tolis, ISCS, I did not do this. Oh no, oh no. Um. And it's not letting me. Oh no. Oh no. Guys, I fucked up. I fucked up. Guys, I I I I did I absolutely did the wrong thing here. Alright, let's set this two slash up zero point six. Okay, V1 and V rotate are both 149 knots. Oh boy. Guys, pray for me. I I done I done goofed. Uh V1 is 149, V2 is one or V rotate is 149. Two is 152. Two slash up 0 0.6. Flex 1061. Please set parking brake. Set parking brake. Thank you, sir. It's connecting to. Please stand by. Uh. It's definitely not going to let me do my load settings. <laughs> Or can I do it here? Uh, five, four, point six slash twenty-seven point one. I do that here. Yes. Then estimated fuel on board is five point six. Oh boy. It's definitely not wanting to let me do it. Is now That's okay. Hand signal right, Captain. See you next time. Have a safe flight. Hand signal on the right. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time. I forgot part of my uh, initialization, but that's okay. We will find out how necessary that was. All right. Show me that pin. Perfect. All right. Engines are started. Ground spoilers armed. Flap set for takeoff. Uh, engine mode set normal. Uh, flaps, pitch trim. APU master off. Taxi checklist. Nose wheel light set to taxi. Parking brake off. Elapsed time run. Well, we're going to have to reset and run. Flight control check full left, full right, full up, full down. Check. FMA, nav, and climb. Auto brake set max. 
Terrain on ND on Call Purser. Ecam no blue. All right, so we are going to come right here down to the end of this runway. Go ahead and come to this second taxiway. I don't know what these taxiways are because I do not have charts. We're going to do it anyway. We're doing it live, folks. I wish I could change the background colors. And however, look at this. Okay, here we go. That's gonna be helpful. Okay. Okay, we're going to come up on Hotel and then Alpha. I think this is Alpha. It doesn't really actually give me its designation. It's either Alpha or Bravo. Who knows? Currently we're on Bravo, but... I'm going to go ahead and turn the brake fans off because we are doing just, just fine. Alright, transponder to TARA. Brake temp is good. Engine mode as required. Runway turnoff lights on. Landing lights on. Nose wheel lights to take off. Alright, let's get lined up on runway 09 left. Chrono start. Engines to 50%. 
Stabilized. Release parking brake. Flex set. Airspeed's alive. Any nuts? You want rotate? Positive rate, gear up. Flaps one. Rattle to the climb position. Nose down. Let's go ahead and set the autopilot so I can take care of some other things. Let's go ahead and clean up our uh, ground spoilers. Nose wheel light, runway turn off lights off. Uh, uh, the one on, throttle to the climb to 10, flaps retract, via procedures, speed checked, flaps clean. Engine mode normal, engine anti-ice is off, landing lights retracted at 10,000 feet, at about 7,000, I think. That's our outer marker. Our transition altitude is 8,000 feet, so 8,000 MSL. We will go ahead and flick those off. It's going through 7,000 feet. That was our transition altitude on the way here. However, we're going to take 8,000 feet on the way back. And it looks like our uh, landing elevation is only going to be 10 feet off the water. Looks like we're flying through some clouds here. It doesn't look half bad for being X-plane basic clouds. Alright, we are through 8,000 feet, actually through 9,000. Let's go ahead and set standard barometer. Then through 10,000, we're going to turn off our landing lights and our seat belts. Go ahead and let the uh, passengers run around the cabin, hopefully safely. All right, so we are on our way. Let's look at our procedures. Altimeter is set standard. The landing lights are retracted. Looks like we're good for cruise. Even though technically we won't be at cruise for a little bit, we're on our ascent. But there's a difference between the ascent phase and cruise as far as a checklist. Um, technically we are still on ascent, but we should be going through our uh, cruise procedures because we have no other checklist items to complete and technically speaking if we were paying attention to only our takeoff and climb procedures because we are still on the climb phase then we would not be monitoring our ecam to make sure that nothing's about to explode or the passenger uh, compartment is not uh, climbing too quickly Which, yes, by the way, that is something that most people do not understand about flying. So, yes, the, the cabin is pressurized. 
but it is not pressurized to make you feel like you are at sea level or at wherever you're landing or wherever you're coming from. It's not pressurized that way. It's pressurized to a set higher amount than what the outside air is that is enough for you to breathe and it brings you up to a safe altitude slowly and then on descent it also brings you back down to a safe altitude slowly. So it doesn't keep the same pressure inside that it did when you took off or when you're landing. It just keeps it safe. And that's why a lot of foods don't taste the same on an airplane. It's why airline food is so bad. It's not because the food itself is bad. Anybody who's actually picked up food and been able to bring it on a plane knows this. Like, yes, you can't really do that anymore, but there were times in living memory where people were able to pick up food and bring it with them onto an airplane. So if you've ever done that, you know it doesn't taste right once it's on the airplane. You, you can taste the same sandwich on the ground and in the air. It will always taste better on the ground because your, your body doesn't doesn't process the flavor the same way at altitude in low pressure environments than it does on the ground. So that sandwich or whatever it is, is it's designed and developed to be eaten at a certain altitude, right? That's why, um, you know, you may not have the same recipe make the same food in Denver that it does in Kansas City. It won't, it won't taste the same. Why? Because it's at different altitudes. Radically different altitudes. So you may need more salt. You may need less salt. You may, you may need stronger flavors. It just won't taste the same when you make it in a different location. Um, at least if those locations are radically different as far as altitude. More fun information that nobody actually needed, but you're getting anyway. Um, Alright, so it looks like we have about, uh, where, where's our uh, on route? ETA, there, 27 minutes. And dropping. Significantly dropping. Let's go ahead and get a little bit more of our map showing. It looks like we're almost to uh, cruise. We're about 17 miles out from cruise if we went as the uh, as the crow flies. Go ahead and turn this music up just a little bit. I want to be able to hear it. I went to all the trouble of finding good, copyright-free music that uh, can be played on stream, but I don't have any problems with Twitch getting a little bitchy about clips and stuff like that, uh, and risking my channel getting deleted, so I'd like to make use of it and make sure people can hear it, just not hear it better than me. After all, you can get this music anywhere. You can you can watch it on YouTube. You can get this content. I mean, you can't get my specific brand of content, but you can get flight sim content on YouTube, on Twitch. Uh, there's some great people like Captain K-Man and Captain Canada. You've got um, real life pilots like Flight Deck to Sim and V1 Simulations. Uh, V1 actually does, uh, he's, an, he's a real life Airbus pilot, where um, Flight Deck to Sim is a, I want to say 737 real life pilot, and Flight Deck to Sim usually flies the Zebo V1, I'm not sure what he flies, um, at least most often. Captain Canada flies everything, don't, don't even add him, like, flies everything. Um, one thing I'm really excited for, it's coming up in the field of aviation simulation, is the Thrustmaster TCA um, Airbus side stick replica. I am so excited for this, and I want it. I want it in my face. I want it on my desk. I want it in my life. 
I want to fly the Airbus with the Airbus side stick. Um, it looks so much more ergonomic. And from what I've understood, from what I've been told from other streamers and everything, is that it is... You have better control. It's not because the internals are any better. It's because the ergonomics of the grip itself are better. Uh, another thing I'm looking forward to is getting some rudder pedals. That seems obvious. I should have had rudder pedals a long time ago. This is absolutely true. I should have been flying with rudder pedals since day one. Uh, I have not. Anybody who has been around the stream long enough knows that. I have not had rudder pedals since day one. Uh, I still do not have rudder pedals now. Uh, I am planning on getting them. Just the specific one that I want for my first set of rudder pedals is not currently available. Um, not, not at a reasonable price. It's been discontinued, so there's not a lot of places that I can find it other than like uh, eBay or uh, something like that where I'm getting it used. So if I'm going to get it used anyway, I may as well get it as cheap as possible. And I have a friend of the stream who is willing to try and fix theirs. They're very, very handy. And turns out that the way that they fix this particular um, rudder pedal actually makes it better than the day you bought it. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. I hope they allow me to send them some money and get it fixed, get it you know, taken care of and shipped out this way. That would be ideal for me. Um, and then I'll have rudder pedals, which is a lot easier than trying to control my yaw through my rotation on my stick. Um, I hate the rotation on my stick because it makes me deflect the, the, uh, the stick itself in directions that I don't mean it to. So it's hard to control, you know, forward, back, left, right, and twist on the same controller. Uh, that's very difficult for me. So I'm very much looking forward to finally getting a reasonably professional setup where I can actually simulate all of flying an aircraft. Um, oh, it looks like we're coming up on top of the scent. And it's going to scream at me for destination data, so let's go ahead and get that. This is Santos Dumont Information Alpha. 0010 Zulu. Visibility greater than 10. Temperature 22. Dew point 21. Wind BRB at 2. Altimeter 1013. Advise you have information alpha. End of information alpha. This is Santos Dumont information. Okay, one zero one three. Now let's see if we can't grab our winds. Initialization wind. Set wind. Mm, both both legs today. Both legs. I was able to get that. Fantastic. I'm so pleased by that. Okay, let's look at progress. Where the hell are we heading? S R J. Okay, S B R J. What are we coming in on? Okay, so we need 20 left jet view. on a SID. Just look at these. Okay, so we're on runway 20.
Okay, we are at top of drop, so we're going to have to start coming down. Okay, so our actual approach procedure... Arnav two zero Lima whiskey. Tells me nothing. Oh boy. Instrument approach procedures are nav whiskey to your left. Oh. Oh well. All right, we're gonna do the best we can. We're doing it live, folks. All right, let's look at flight planning here. Last fix is going to be 906. Let's look at our descent procedures. Okay, landing elevation set auto. Make do arrivals. Performance approach complete. Top of descent winds complete. Uh, FCU out should be set and push, which I've done. Uh, speed brake half as required. Not required. Altimeter set QNH 1013. Go ahead and set that. One less thing to do later. Alright, 1013. Landing lights on at 10,000 feet. ND data set constraints. Airports looks good. Landing system as required. Okay, so we are as good as we can be. If I can't grab this. Alright. We're just kind of doing the best we can here. Um, this is going to be interesting. 
So I cannot even find approach plates. I don't know where I'm supposed to intercept the glide slope and localizer. We're just winging it. We're just going to see if we can't not die. I think that that's a laudable goal for any aircraft pilot. Uh, normally, I would do a lot more preparation before flying this, but um, I didn't. It's been a busy day. Um, I had taxes sneak up on me. I didn't think about it, and so now uh, my business taxes are all due, and I've had to been rushing getting all those prepared all day. So this is what you get. This is just what what you get. All right, it actually does not look bad. I think we can handle this. I don't need plates, I'll be fine. It looks like our procedures are gonna be a climbing left turn, 4,000, if we miss. Which we probably will. I'm probably going to cock everything up. But you know what? That's half the fun of it. You know? This is the fun. This is what we do. This is how we enjoy it. Um, it's just... We roll with it. We roll with the punches. We see if we can't hit that runway. Uh, preferably lightly enough that we don't die. Take a look outside. Oh, that scream. This would be a lot better if we didn't have the cloud cover. That'd be ideal. Alright, let's... Still spot. Get some flyby action. We have indeed slowed down quite a bit. I love that Airbus scream. Looks like we had a little bit of a tailwind. Hopefully that tailwind will turn into a headwind by the time we turn around and land. But uh, from what I understand, it's supposed to be about two knots on the ground, variable wind, wind direction. It shouldn't be much of a, of a concern no matter what way it's blowing. flying is supposed to be real world weather it's probably not it's probably as close as x-plane can model i don't have any weather you know um i don't have any weather weather plugins weather don't have any weather plugins fcu speed be in the managed mode. Speed brake as required, which we don't at the moment. Flaps one at 230 knots. Which we're not going to hit 230 knots until somewhere right around uh, Bellet. Bellu.
apologize if you hear some squeaking. That is my water bottle. It is a vacuum bottle so that it keeps cold. And that feels so good because it is just a little warm in here. Uh, apparently there was a malfunction with our air conditioning. It's working again now, but it can only do so much. Uh, it was off for about three hours, hottest part of the day. That was pretty rough. So it's doing the best it can to get caught back up now. And it's very difficult for it to do that while I'm streaming. Streaming, is, it generates a lot of heat, an awful lot of heat. Um, I can feel my my tower right now, and it ooh ooh that is very warm. That is uncomfortably warm. I could burn myself on it. I probably need to get this bird on the ground, and then cut stream and let it cool down a little bit. So uh, that's our that's our goal today. Is we're gonna get down as quickly as we can, and then cut stream because I'm concerned about damage. Uh, let's see. Do I have something where I can monitor temperatures? That's not it. I don't remember what it is. <laughs> I have a program here somewhere. I do not, for the life of me, remember what it might be. Ah, there it is. There it is. Corsair IQ. Alright, let's look at our dashboard. It looks like our CPU is sitting at about 70 degrees Celsius. Um, yeah, our video card's at about 80 degrees Celsius. I really don't want it to get anywhere near 90. So. Yeah, we're going to get this bird down. I still feel comfortable getting the bird down. Just crossing 10,000 feet. Let's go ahead and get our landing lights on. And I'm going to go ahead and let... Mm, let's get the passengers seated. We're coming up on some clouds. That could cause some turbulence. So flaps one will be at 230 knots. We're still quite a ways away from that. Let's see, about 10, 12 miles until we start slowing down. We need to be at 6,000 plus at Gellets. We are going to set our decision height to 200 feet. Looks like we're about 30 miles from the airport. And probably a quarter mile away from these clouds. Oh, that looks so cool. Oh. There we go. Oh, look at that. I want to watch us skim into these clouds, but I want to make sure that we're not... Okay. Ah! Huh, where'd my clouds go? Explain! Explain, explain! I 
go ahead and turn on our landing system. It won't do anything until we're tuned. Until we actually receive the ILS frequency. But I'm fine with that. I'm fine with it not doing anything. I have a problem with it not being on. And we're about to hit a D cell. Or speed's about to our speed limit's about to drop. There we go. I'll start at six thousand. We're at a constraint. We're gonna decelerate to two hundred thirty knots, which I'm gonna still wait to put in flaps one because we're holding at 230 knots and I want to be below 230 knots. Oh, don't scream at me about a 50 foot deviation. We're fine. Now we can start descending again. Below 230 knots, speed checked, flaps one. Oh, he's gonna scream at us a little bit because we're we're descending, but so is the land. So, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. That one's correct, but this one says Those are both extended. I don't know why this is saying like that, but it is. Okay, uh, we need to get below. Or 15 knots. Laps two. We're below 200 knots, flaps to... It looks like we're kind of doing a circle to land here. So we may need to go down a little lower. All right, let's go flaps three. Flaps full. Gear down. Ground spoilers armed. Auto brake set to medium. Call the cabin. Nose wheel lights taxi. Runway turn off lights on. We are fully configured. The only thing to worry about now is making sure that we do this circle to land properly. Right about a hundred and what? 132 knots. We're 
about seven and a half miles from the runway, and it's like over here. altitude constraint. So I think it should be right over here on the water somewhere. I think that's it. This going to be fun. Yeah, that's it right there. You're not going to have much time to get stabilized. Oh boy. Go off the edge. Ooh, well, we definitely went off the runway. That was definitely a runway excursion. Oh. Yeah, we floated way too long on that. That was absolutely my fault. Uh, but I was con I wanted to do a go around, but I couldn't given my uh, situation with the, my computer. I want to get on the ground. I want to get stopped. I want to get the computer cooling off. So we're just going to quickly turn these off, turn that off, disengage, flap zero.
Turn on our brake fans. Oh, our brakes are real hot. All right, brakes are like a computer. Very, 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 very hot. Okay, I'm gonna roll out procedures, get the master switch on. Uh, landing lights are retracted, ground spoilers are disarmed, engine mode is on normal, flaps are retracted, APU master is on, APU start as soon as it's available, uh, terrain on ND off, and brake fans on, that is all checked, all good, we're just waiting for that APU to become available, then let's slow down and we'll pull in next to this Air Berlin. Because I don't want to worry about connecting to jetways. Actually, let's let's go next to the Air Canada. Okay, I think that should be good. Let's take a look at how I parked. Looks like we can still go forward quite a bit. All right, parking procedures. Parking brake pressure check green, which looks close enough, good enough. Anti-ice off, APU bleed on, which I can't do because this was still starting. Uh, so there's not really anything I can do there, but let's uh, wing lights off. Um, nose wheel lights off, nav and logo off. We cannot turn our beacon off until we have our engines off. I didn't turn off that APU bleed while it's starting. Very close to being done. There it goes. APU bleed on. Engines one and two off. When we turn off, lights are off. Beacon off, seat belts off, elapsed time stop. All right, fuel pumps all off. Transponder is standby. It does dim. Brake fans off. Uh, not likely. We're up to 400 degrees. That is really bad. Uh, securing the aircraft. Let's go ahead and check the parking brake is on. The gears set off. External lights all off. All external lights off. Uh, APU bleed off. APU master off. Emergency exit lights off. No smoking off. Battery one and two off. Go ahead and hit that. 3960 is our shutdown fuel. All right, and that's us completed in Sao pa or pardon me, we're back in Rio de Janeiro today. Thank you guys so much for being here. I am here every week on Tuesday from 5 to 7 minimum flying uh, airplanes. 
Then I come back Wednesday from 5 to 7 and Friday from 2 to 4 central time. You will see a countdown down below the stream. Uh, that's the, the times that I play RPGs and other classic style games. Uh, most recently it has been uh, focused on... Um, it's mostly been focused on um, Trials of Mana. So, thank you guys so much for being here. I will see you guys later, hopefully tomorrow. Thank you, and have a fantastic afternoon. Bye-bye, everybody.